September 9th from 7 to 8 p.m., where we hope to explain to you what's next, right? So if you showed up uh, and you are a resident of the OMI and you want to participate in what's to come, we are happy to explain to you what's to come and what uh, the resident readiness program hopes to build on. So again, make sure that we're, uh, we're ensuring that folks are prepared for all hazards. Uh, so thank you very much for the folks who came and I hope to see you on September 9th. Very good. All right. We'll make that sure to show up right as the, it's ending again. <laughs> uh, I can't guarantee- because we were so efficient. <laughs> right, we just finished in 30 minutes and it was, yeah. it, and it was, we finished before the, the uh, libations. So it wasn't because of the libations we finished. All right, <laughs> Mr. Selby and Michael Choi, you have anything to say in regards to the, how we can be a part of the election process, what we're doing, what you're doing at this point with all this COVID and smoke, what's going on? Uh, sure, I'll let, uh, since Michael is the manager of the outreach division, I'll, I'll let him take it over. Okay. Yeah, certainly. So um, we have just really uh, started our outreach efforts in San Francisco. Um, we, had, we started first initially with, um, in partnership with the Emergency Operation Command Center of San Francisco to uh, put up posters around the city to let everyone know that everyone will be receiving a ballot in the mail this November and that um, in order to be prepared, make sure that you are registered to vote. Um, and also uh, we provided, uh, there's links on these posters to let people know how they can check the registration status to make sure that they are currently registered and all the registration info is current uh, to make sure that they do get a vote uh, ballot in the mail and also how to sign up for ballot updates to make sure that um, it, is, it has arrived and also how to track it to make sure it's gotten back to the department to be counted. And uh, we have also just launched a series of webinars. Uh, so we are inviting, so we are inviting all of our um, community partners and uh, uh, everyone here as well to, uh, to get in contact with us and to, uh, in order to book us for uh, webinars to review your voting options for this upcoming election. And also if you're interested in, re in uh, registering voters and hosting your own registration drive, uh, we can, product we can uh, conduct a training to, uh, to go over our best practices and uh, procedures to make, sure that, um, you, to make sure that you can run your own successful registration drive. And we're also uh, hosting a limited number of, we're also uh, attending a limited number of in-person events. Um, right now we've received a couple of, um, of uh, private requests to uh, register voters at uh, housing facilities and uh, care homes. And so if you are interested in registering uh, and having us to uh, register voters at a small event of 10 to 12 people, um, definitely do free uh, do feel free to contact us by email at sfoutreach at sfgov.org in order to uh, to book us for an event and then for um for let's see so alita i, I believe alita mentioned uh, asked a question about um residents who don't have stable addresses yes yeah, so we are working in partnership with osea uh, to to uh, conduct street outreach to make sure that uh, residents with with uh, with uh, unstable addresses or are experiencing homelessness that um, that everyone will be getting ballot in the mail this election. However, we also will have in person voting opportunities available. Um, we will have 588 polling places for this upcoming election uh, on election day. So everyone who uh, wants to vote in person, they can definitely do so. Uh, we just also want to let people know that, that they will be receiving a ballot in the mail by default uh, to make sure that they can vote safely and uh, stay healthy in case they do not want to vote in person. Um, and we're also working with, um, with HS, uh, HSH to have a presence inside the isolation and quarantine hotels around the city to make sure that uh, they are aware of this information and that they are registered 
if they do want to participate in this upcoming election. And also, uh, just to repeat our email address, it's sfoutreach at sfgov.org. Okay. All right. How much time frame do you need for the events? Uh, normally a week notice, a uh, week's notice would be uh, preferable. Um, if something is on short notice, we can definitely try to make arrangements and accommodations to be there. Uh, we can also always provide materials as well. If say uh, you would like to have registration cards to uh, host your own event, we can definitely provide that. We have brochures and online resources available too, so that um, you so that any attendees at your event will can have something to uh, inform them of uh, all their voting options for this upcoming election. Okay. So if we wanted to come to get those, uh, like we do, are you thinking of our Fridays, Delia? And that then, and yeah, that and Wednesdays and you know Thursdays and. <laughs> um, so can we? I know that you know to come into Department of Elections in the past, I've had to make an appointment. Do, do we have to do that to pick up materials, or can we just stop by and call you guys from the the checkpoint out front, or I mean on the side, or how does that work? Yeah. So right now we are open by appointment only. Um, so you could give us a call at a four one five 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 four four three seven five. Four, or you could five, you uh, four three seven five, or send us an email, and then uh, we can make those arrangements to to have um, materials ready for you at a specific time. Um, I I believe Matt might have a little more info about uh, setting appointments at the department. Sure. So whenever you want to come in. Um, we're, we're open by appointment only, but we're pretty flexible as far as, you know, coming in to either, you know, make registration updates, get voter outreach materials, anything like that. Um, it's really for the security of the building, for the sheriff's department, just knowing who's in the building and when they're in the building. Um, so we're open by appointment only. You can call, you can email, um, but I wouldn't worry about, you know, not being able to come in at your preferred time. Mm -hmm. So um, I was wondering, because there's a lot of concerns about the, the post office and the mail system now. And so there's a lot of talk like, um, even though you can mail your ballot without postage, that you should put postage, because then it will be treated like first class mail and it will be more secure that way. And the other thing is um, just not mailing it in at all, but maybe um, sending it into our CBOs and, and then having someone make the appointment and go down and actually take it to the Department of Elections. So there's, there is really real concern about um, the mail system and what's going on. I mean, you see locks on certain mailboxes or, you know, different things going on that um, never happened before in other elections. So what what is the best practices? Yeah, certainly. So definitely uh, with all the uncertainty surrounding USPS, that is a huge concern. Um, so in case you do uh, want to make sure that it does get back to our department directly without having to go through USPS, uh, well, one way, uh, one way is that, um, so 29 days before election day, our uh, voting center at City Hall opens. And so you could take it down straight to City Hall um, in order to make sure that it reaches our hands directly. And you could also take it down to any point. Well, that, that would happen without an appointment or anything, right? Yeah, you... right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this... what I was thinking was having um, having people, you know, not having all our seniors or, or vulnerable population having to go down to City Hall if if our neighborhood associations or CPOs collected them and then we brought them a whole like 20, 25, all at once. Mm -hmm. Is that a good idea or not? Um, Matt, do you might do you you might have any more um, like insight on that? Uh, sure. So, so it's not a bad idea. Um, there there is a section on the back of each of the vote by mail envelopes 
uh, where it's essentially saying who is turning in this ballot on your behalf. So oh. you would just complete that section. And then if you wanted to have one person turn in um, 30 ballots for voters uh, at the at the early voting center or at a polling place, um, that's <clears throat> that's totally fine. Uh, you can do that if you would like. Uh, we are also planning to have uh, drop-off stations um, the weekend before the election uh, around the city, but we're still working to identify uh, the specific locations. Um, but they won't be like just a drop-off box. It'll be it'll be staffed with Department of Elections staff. Um, there will also be sheriffs uh, involved as well. Um, will every district have that? Because usually the OMI is uh, not even in consideration when so, these things happen. So I can't I can't guarantee that, but we are still working to identify um, appropriate locations. Um, right now, I know for sure we will have here the City Hall Voting Center and the Chase Center. Um, so aside from those two, we're still working to identify additional locations. Okay, and what about the question regarding stamps or not putting stamps? Is there a better priority if you actually put a couple stamps over the free postage or, um, or not? Does it make a difference at all? Or is it just a waste of your stamp? I mean, Honestly, I'm... That it's treated like first class postage if you actually put the stamp. I'm actually unsure about that. I would have to follow up with our director uh, to give okay. you a, a, a better answer because I'm, I'm just not sure. Okay, you'll get back to us? Yes. Thank you. I'd also like to say that if um, I will volunteer IT Bookman as a drop-off location, um, you know, if you're looking for someone, I mean, I know 50 Broad is convenient on, on that end. If you're looking for something off the Randolph side, of course, the, um, the IT Bookman site, whatever we could do to help make sure that people have access to, to drop off points, I'd be willing to, um, you know, have a staff member and whatever needs to happen there to make that happen. Okay, I will relay that to our director and we will get back to you. Okay, well, I, I believe we're already registered like for a, a polling place, yeah. but just if that if we could help in being a drop off, whatever we can do to make sure that our vulnerable, our senior aging population um, and anyone can make sure their ballots count. Just want you to know we'd be willing to be a partner in it. I, I think I, I speak very confidently when I say that, you know, the District 11 Democratic Club, part of our mandate is voter outreach. So if there's any way that we could help work with you, Ms. Felicia, or um, any of the other groups here, I would love to coordinate. This is, this is our jam right here. So let us Definitely. Know. Let's talk because I want to put um, a, a mailer in all of our, to everyone who we're delivering to. That's about 120 of the seniors that if you can't make it, what to do to your ballot so that we can pick it up and and be um, appropriately dropping it off for them. So I'm willing to be a, a polling place, a drop off center, use my truck to drop off the ballots to City Hall, you know, whatever we have to do in, on that day in that process. Very good. Right. Thank you, Felicity. Any Just other questions? last question, is there um, an ideal time frame uh, rather than like the day of, but prior to, does it help the Department of Elections for, um, for collating or whatever to, to, to do it 10 days early or whatever, or is it, just, it doesn't matter? Do, do you prefer the ballots coming in early or the day of or what? Or does yeah. it matter? So uh, we early. recommend uh, getting ballots in as soon as you've made your choices. Uh, so the earlier the better, uh, especially if you're mailing them in. 
you know, you, you obviously want to give the post office some time, uh, you know, for processing. Uh, but either way, as early, you know, as, as early as possible. Okay. Thank and you. Rem remind me, when are they coming in the mail, the mail-in ballots? So legally, we can't mail them out until uh, October 5th, I believe. So yeah, 29 days prior to the election. So I would expect most people to receive them uh, that first full week of October. Um, but most people should definitely receive them by, I would say, October 14th. Yeah, and if you don't receive your ballot, definitely call the department so we can make arrangements to get a replacement for you. Uh, even if you lose or damage your ballot, we can always make arrangements to get you a replacement as well. Okay. All right. Any other questions for elections? All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Yeah, I had a question. Who is this? I had a question. Okay. Bonnie? Okay. Go ahead, Bonnie. All right, Bonnie. Well, I was just going to ask them, y'all, if it doesn't get mailed to us. What? Say, repeat your question. <clears throat> if, if if the mail if it does not in the mail, you pick one up at City Hall, a ballot. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you- That's the question. Yeah, so for any reason, if you don't get your ballot in the mail, uh, you can uh, come down to the City Hall Voting Center and pick up a ballot. Uh, you can vote on it while you're here. You can take it home, uh, vote on it you know, at home, and then either pop it back in the mail or bring it back, uh, drop it off at a polling place, anything like that. Uh, so yeah, I but- I would honestly wait until about October 14th uh, to, you know, to do that option. Or, you know, if you want to just get it all out of the way, you yep. can come down to City Hall on October 5th and get a ballot. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Laura Padilla. What you got? Mute. Hi everyone, Laura Badia with Mission Y. Um, the updates, I know last week we tabled um, talking about our annual events. Um, so we have a list of annual events that we do through the OMI Collaborative Grant. And um, some of them usually happen around this month. Our backpack giveaway, our health and wellness fair usually happens in September the toy drive. Um, so I don't know if we want to create a subcommittee to chat about these, um, these annual events, or um, if we want to set up some one on one meetings with me about how um, we, we make these happen or um, they don't happen and we move the funds to our general grants um, that are up to $5,000 for community, um, community advancement. So has there been any outreach to the those other groups? Um, no. Okay. I know we, so last time we said little table if you have one, um, started thinking about what you could do. Um, so I'll ask the group if you want, want to create a subcommittee or set up one-on-one -on -one meetings. What? Um, I think this also comes in, um, with the survey I did around what we want to do with the $14,000 that we have set aside currently. Um, if we want to continue to do the events, I think it's, it should be, um, a conversation about where, where you guys want to move, move these funds this next six months. Um, so what I'm, what I'm seeing in the survey is there's a lot of interest behind our invest black and senior programming were some of the big highlights that came out of the survey. Okay. Um, just. I, I'm not a fan of doing subcommittee meetings because I want everyone to be involved and be 
have an input and not no side conversations about money. Mm -hmm. um, we can set up another Zoom and have the, the uh, recipients of the $1,000, the ongoing, um, to be a part of the conversation. Um, okay. I, would ra I would prefer that. Okay. Anybody have any objection to that? All right. No. Okay. Um, is there a particular date that would work well with everyone? Delia, can we folk? Can we take one of these meetings that we have and just focus on that? You know, half of yeah. that meeting. Or yeah. Let that be the agenda. How we do certain certain topics. Yes, we can. Definitely. Thank you, Felicia. Okay. So next, um, are we comfortable with next meeting? All right. Okay, so we'll dedicate that to um, half of that meeting to talk about the ongoing um, activities. All right. Very good. And can you take care of the um, the outreach to those? Most of yeah. them are here, but you know. Just yeah, the there's a few that we'll need. All right. Okay. And um, anything else? Not today. Not today. Not today. Um, as far as food, Dilly, I'm um, trying to set up something at the food bank to get some sort of security around our Wednesday food distribution. Um, Monica, uh, she emailed me. Well, she called me last week. She's giving us a $20,000 um, grant to use for the food boxes. Awesome. So, um, I just need to work out whatever I got to do to to get that twenty thousand dollars to that would fund um, one hundred twenty five produce boxes, and I'll be able to. Um, what they say is I'll be able to pick what I want: um, lobster, crab, you know, all the good stuff. Um, is it is that money? Is that kind of coming from an ad back, or is that from the COVID fund? I have yeah. no idea. Okay. It's um, it's a different. It's a it's own grant, Bonnie. It's a private grant. Oh, great! Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, so that's yeah. I know that I'm all set for tomorrow. They say, but um, as far as ongoing, I'm supposed to meet with someone today, in regards to it. So I don't have any more details. Okay. Um, anything else? All right. Uh, Monica is not able to attend today's meeting because of, you know, the budget, which is taking over everyone's lives um, as far as, uh, you know, reporting back um, any updates. I know we have one more week of COVID testing at 50 Broad. We have, um, I don't think we have any calls. Felicia, do we have any calls in regards to the COVID testing, the last one? Are we going out with a bang? No, we're not going out with a bang. Um, Can I publicize it to the Denman community? I mean, uh, put it on the, how, how far and wide do we want to, um, do we want to send this information? So I was talking to EJ today and it is open to any and everyone. We are want to go out with the bang. It will be the last one for August. We're still hoping to still be able to carry that on, but that's not final yet. But he did say in the earlier meeting I had with him this morning that it's a call to anyone, um, especially who is marginalized, have access because you can park. Right? Yes. Yes. Can we do kids? I, I Did we confirm? We advertise both of them. We haven't got confirmation okay. for children. No, yet. whatever is okay. convenient for you know, either depending where they live or whatever. Okay. For Crocker on Monday and definitely ours on Friday. Okay. We would like to go out with a big bang though. We need to just just blow out Excelsior, right? No, it's, there's no competition. We're all big one, big happy family. Um, there, there's something else I wanted to say about the COVID testing. Um, I know that Mo Monica is dealing is um, already starting planning for the flu shots, but I ha but she has um, she's working on her making arrangements. She but she's 
also she doesn't have dates but she's also dealing with the backpack giveaway from the mayor also so there's two dates that'll probably be released um shortly um, and above for the covid testing too it's 13 and above 13 and above all right very good um, other than that, that's all all the update I have. Anybody have any other op updates? Renard, have I've we got audited this week? No, thank you. I've, I'm going through a lot up here, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't even want to bring nobody down. So it, it's moving in the right direction. But I've, okay. I've seen every department head this week. And tomorrow I'll be on... I'll be on with Maria Sue personally, uh, myself and the two principals. So I'll probably try to involve Teresa in that as well. And Laura, um, we're gonna have a meeting tomorrow as far as the, these, the changing of the name from the community learn, I mean, the learning hubs to community hubs now. Um, Can't hardly hear you. I'm sorry, I'm a little tired. Uh, he's, he's weak from all these conversations. Yeah, a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Too many conversations and forgetting who I'm talking to. So um, there's just a lot going on with these community love, these community hubs. Um, it's weighing down the principles. It's weighing down everyone. Uh, a lot of secretive stuff going on with the lists of, yeah. of students and who's going to be able to come to the community hubs, who's not, who they're reaching out to. It's a lot going on and. Um, it's just a lot, you guys. It's a lot going on with this, and I'm. I'm Is anywhere that we can support you in any way? I mean, to be honest with you, it's not just me. It's it's everyone that's involved with this. Community. I know, but how can we do that? <laughs> uh, I'll know more tomorrow at three o'clock. To be honest with you, when I get off the phone with Maria, um, it, it's, it's uh, even with the technology there. Now they're they want us to support twenty for. I mean a. Uh, they want to su support a Chromebook for every student, right? They also want to store all this sort of equipment at your facility right? Um, and be responsible for that, you know? Um, that's a lot asking on the parents. That's just a lot on uh, on us as, you know, there's a lot going on with this, um, with the internet access and all of those type of things. It's, it's just a lot and it it's it's being exposed. It's being exposed because we really shouldn't be doing this because it's so many hoops that are being jumped through. And then you're finding out like all the hoops that they've made Delia and I jump through for all these years, no disrespect to everybody. It's like, how are these pro how are these programs, how were these programs running before COVID? Right. <laughs> because they're coming to me like things that we already have, like, oh, is your staff CPR trained? Like I'm seeing people on these call like their staff isn't CPR trained. Well, how were you operating before? Right. Like mandated I, uh, reporting. Yeah, and I'm 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm com I'm confused by them not having this certification. So now with these organizations that have they don't have the certification, what are they asking them to do? Can you be a co-anchor with this such and such, you know? No, no, I can't be a co-anchor with anybody else because they're not certified. Right. You know, I put my foot down about that. Like, I'm not having yeah. another program collaborate with collaborate with me because they don't have a building or they don't have certification. So they're going to be using our certification for them to operate. No, it no. doesn't work. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's where we are right now. It's just a lot, and I know I'm rambling, but there's just a lot going on. You're not rambling. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so, family child care. We have to do the same thing. We have to be certified for all, both, all those things. And as one person or two people, we have to, everyone that's here have to be certified. So I don't understand Yeah, that. but Mary, here's the, here's, the, here's the confusing part. So these people come to make sure I had all the proper training and certificates and all of this stuff for myself and the staff. And then I get a call two hours later asking me to accept a co-anchor from our program that don't have any sort of, how are they funded? How were they funded all these years? How are they getting, how are they providing services when they don't have the certification? And I'm sitting here like, I, I'm like, I'm a stickler, like making sure that everybody has their certification. They have the proper training. We're doing all these type of things, having the insurance and come to find out a lot of these people that have been 
providing services don't have this. Right. And what happened to their audits? Exactly. Right. So, and, I'm, and I'm sitting here just like right now, they're coming out tomorrow and, and they know we just finished construction. They're coming out tomorrow and I'm going to talk to Maria about it. They're coming out tomorrow to make sure that my building, the tech department from DCYF is coming out to make sure that our internet is proper enough for to serve 20 kids. Like, but you got people providing services without a building. So how are they providing services or certification? But I, I'm just confused by the whole process. Yeah. yeah. That's just so crazy. They, they're lucky to have you, period. Absolutely. Being able to offer this. My concern is um, who they're sending to you. Is it oh. kids from the neighborhood, the kids that need it the most, the special ed kids? I mean, well, where are they started, picking these people out of? These so children? it started like that, Mary. So this is what happened. So you, I don't know if you were on the call when I introduced Dina Edwards to the meeting, uh, to Maria Sue. Like, she wasn't involved in... I've, I've caught a lot of flack from that, you guys. I'm just being, and Delia, you and I got talked offline after that meeting we had with HRC. Like, oh, it's getting real, you guys. Like, <laughs> I, I've been outed out as a person who have been involving other people to the, uh, to the meetings that wasn't invited. So I, I wasn't supposed to send that to the principal because San Francisco Unified doesn't want to have any parts of any of this, to mm -hmm. be honest. So um, that's why Dina Edwards was in the dark with that because they're trying to keep the numbers low because we can't serve all of all the kids we're supposed to. Exactly. So Mary, to answer your question, um, the principals are supposed to put together a list of the most kids in need, the kids with limited access, you know, you know that that need need help, and so they put a list together and. We're only serving 20 kids at Merced Heights. So Mr. Krause and Jose Ortega, he put a list together of 75 students. And then Ms. Edwards put together a list of 50 students. We're only we're only serving 20 children, right? Wow. So then you, have, you got many in Lovey Ward that has a list. They have a list of over 100 something kids. They're only serving um, 60, right? So with that, it it's 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 causing a big problem because parents are looking at us like, hey, you know, my kid was already in youth first. What it, there's a program in youth first, like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to get priority. Right. And exactly. Not, yeah. yeah. And they're not allowing that to happen. So tomorrow this meeting shall be interesting to say the to say the least. It shall be interesting. Bernard, how are they determining who gets priority? Like, what is there a criteria? Is it based on income, or they just go down the list and say, I they, think this person? Yeah, no, they started with, you know, because, you know, every student in terms of Unified fills out that economic form, right? Okay. They have public housing or those type of things. So they went off that initial list, right? Mm -hmm. That's how you that's how you qualify for the food program in the Unified School mm -hmm. District. Mm -hmm. All of those type of things. So they're going by that first. Who lives in like housing projects? Um, who doesn't have access, immediate access to the internet, even though they have a Chromebook? Who doesn't have the hotspots? That's how they're identifying the need. Um, but if you look at the list and there's columns, and I, I, you know me, I'll forward it to you guys. <laughs> there's columns <laughs> where parents are supposed to fill mm -hmm. those things out. Um, and some people didn't fill them out. But some people are in need, but didn't fill those columns out, you know, last year when they registered for school, not knowing that this would happen. So oh. those kids will be, uh, you know, out as well. Like just right now, I just left the office and two of my, two of the people that work for me, Sarah, she works at Sheridan, but they also have children that attend Sheridan, right? So they're in school and her son's supposed to be doing homework, right? She's supposed to be on Zoom with his teacher, right? So we're sitting there, I'm, living, I'm looking inside of the little booth that we set up, and I'm watching school. The teacher was absent for 45 minutes. What? On that Zoom call. <laughs> so, Bernard, my concern is, you said that, you know, San Jose Ortega had like an X amount of students, um, as opposed to the students that you're serving. Um, I want to be really transparent in, 
I'm assuming that the students that attend Youth First are primary, primarily Black students. Am I correct in that assumption? Actually, we had we were the melting pot because we did we have a a, a lot of kids who were Asian and Samoan as well. Okay, because my the thing that I'm hyper vigilant about is when we're directing like at school where schools like Jose Ortega where I know that it doesn't have as many black students as it has Asian students and or other ethnicity. And so if all of the services are being provided to those schools as opposed to the local um, the local CBOs that are serving the black students that they're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And you're totally right. And so what, I like, brought, like, I I Mary asked things. the question before, like, what type of support do you, you know, let us know the kind of support, because I will definitely advocate for that, because I feel like, just like you said, the form went out, and parents didn't know to fill out a certain section, and therefore now they're missing out. Like, I think that's been a lot of our handicap in the community is not getting the information communicated to us to so that we can participate in these different programs exactly. or it's conflicting information from the district because mm -hmm. my kids as former foster kids you know they are they qualify for free and reduced lunch and so every year we just get our letter and i've i've flat out asked this i asked it at the, the back to school meeting with the principal at two different schools hey I already have my letter that states I qualify for free and reduced lunch. That means I don't have to fill out the multifamily income form, right? And everyone, and you know, family liaisons, principals have all said, yep, as long as you already have your free and reduced lunch form, your, your letter that states you qualify, you're good. You don't have to fill it out anymore. So does that mean my kids won't qualify for a DCYF spot, even though foster youth are supposed to be prioritized? Yes, yeah, so um, that's youth are supposed to be prioritized. And on my list, there, uh, that I have right now, um, it, it they have a few kids that were foster, you know, foster care um, children, and I know that there's one child that was in my program. I won't say her name, but she was foster care, and the, you know, the person who was caring for her was really elderly, and they're struggling. So I had to actually go to their house to get them to get the proper forms. Uh, to get them on the list down at the school because she just wouldn't know, you know, to be honest with you, like Gail said, they, people, you know, we kind of gloss over things and we're, we, we don't put ourselves out there to be helped. And then we're not broadcasting this. And then we're not right now, Gail, we're not even allowed to broadcast it. That's the major issue because right. we're not allowed to, because they're trying to keep everything pretty much low key. Like, okay. They're giving us this first wave now. So if you get this first wave and you only get like four people that want to sign up, then you go for this second wave. Right. Well, this first wave is already too many. If people want to get out to, to work. You know what I mean? They're stuck at home with their kids. They want to get back to work. And it's just so many issues around this that I, I know everyone on this call could bring up. And Gail, you're, I mean, you're, that's my, my, one of my biggest issues is like, how do we make this accessible for the kids that, that are missing out, you know? Um, and there's going to be kids that usually come to youth first that won't be served by youth first, right? you know? And I, 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 you know, I'm conflicted by that as well. You know, they're calling and they're trying to see what's going on. And it's not, I, I can't really say everything that I want to say because then they're going to go and use that. But at this time, we're not going to be able to serve the youth that we want to serve to be honest with you. That's why, the, and they changed it, like Therese said, they changed the name uh, from to Community Hub because they don't want learning in it because <laughs> they don't want to be taking place of the schools, right? And San Francisco Unified and DCYF, the city, they're not aligned, even though they're saying they are, they're not aligned. And one, one person is saying one thing, another person is saying another thing, and it's getting all mixed up. It's getting, it's so confusing. That's why I involved uh, Dina Edwards, Principal Edwards on the call is because she's calling me every day trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm like, Miss Edwards, I don't know. And she's the principal, right? And that's, that's disheartening. You know what I mean? And this, 
it's disheartening. I'm, I'm proud of her school though, because you know, they're offering services, virtual service from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., which is a very long time to keep kids engaged, to be honest with you, uh, on a computer screen. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, you're very outspoken and I love it. Uh, it needs to be said and you're very frank and honest. Do you think you get targeted because of that with extra shit and extra, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, no. just making, it's making me crazy. And I think, I think it's got to stop. I mean, somebody has got to say this is just out and out. Bullshit. Yeah. Sorry. The, the, the difference is I, I know that's to be true, but here's the issue. That's the, that's the biggest issue is because we have so many people who are providing services who are afraid to speak up and just want to keep their funding and not really do the work for not rock the, the boat yeah. that they serve, right? So yeah. stop going with the status quo just to be, you know, uh, prevalent. Like, I'm not going to go along with you be just to make things right. We have to make it right. You know what I mean? And yes. what's going on is, like, there's people being funded, Mary, that don't even have a building right now. I want you to think, I also want you to think about that. There are people saying they're providing services that aren't providing services. I mean, how fair is that? When there's people on this call that have been working their tails off, right? Mm -hmm. COVID booths, food security, yeah. painting streets, right? Tutoring, you know, mental health, providing, you know, health kits. Think about all the things that people do on a daily basis that go unnoticed. And there's people out there that is getting funded big dollars, not little dollars like you first, that aren't doing anything for the community. And then they just go along with what the city says to keep their funding. And when they know they're in the wrong, like, so I know I'm outspoken, but I'm only outspoken about the community needs. I'm not outspoken. You don't see me beating my chest about anything that youth first needs. I beat my chest about what the community needs and what these I children, say. right? We say the children are our future and they're the foundation, but I see that we pretty much leave them out in the cold every time, right? Especially people of color, you know, and I know that's the theme, but we have to be real with that. And right. like I brought up, they, I brought up something in the meeting, everybody glossed over about the high school students. We, San Francisco, have one of the highest rates of dropouts in the state of California, okay? But we're only doing virtual services for those high school students right now, right? That's not fair to those high school students. Mm -hmm. You know, class of 2020, including my son, lost out on graduations due to COVID this year, right? So their whole senior year was taken away. No prom, no, no, <laughs> no graduation. Uh, basketball games were canceled. The whole nine, their mental has been totally shifted and the first people that we leave out is our high school students right. when do you struggle the most during that transitional age am i right yeah we all needed help the most between the ages of what 18 and 24 mm -hmm. you know what i mean we were still finding ourselves what services do are we really providing that group right now right so i'm still finding themselves you know? <laughs> But I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm still I'm still searching. I'm still, who am I? <laughs> but if, we know who you are, Renard. <laughs> but I think I, but I think the theme of this is this conversation is we're all not set at the same part, you know, level of being audited we're not we're not, we're not expected not all of us are being expected to have all of our paperwork in order we're not all we're not all providing services it's 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 different for everybody and like i mean for me felicity and renard we're talking about being audited and having people come through man you know they're coming in your place probably in the morning they're coming in my place in the in the afternoon because i got my appointment for tomorrow so it's, it's just a, it's not fair, but we cannot be silent either. Um, and we do have to band together. And I, it, it's, I, I don't know what the solution is uh, at all because it's coming at different angles and it's different, it changes differently throughout the week, right? Every day is a different obstacle. 
Um, but I don't I don't know what the answer is as far as you know we can we can wait for HRC to come up with the the guidebook for but we can't we can't wait that long right we're still dealing with the budget the budgets everybody's dealing with their own budgets and stuff so the the priorities now is just to make sure that we can open up right I I, I keep asking questions and they're saying they and I'm being told oh you can anchor with this person. And then I'm like, but I have questions you haven't even answered yet. You know, how can I open up on Monday? How, what does that look like if, and then they're like, well, if you, if you open up on Monday, you're opening up too early. So you don't get PPE, you don't get food, you don't get these things. And I'm like, but I don't really need your things because I have them because the community has already supported me enough so that I can start on Monday without yeah, your yeah. stuff. Don't say, don't say you don't need their stuff. Cause I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> so here's, a, here's the funny thing, Delia. Here's the funny thing. So we were going over some bills due to pivoting, right? Uh-huh. And I won't say his name. He said that uh, this is how it works. And he said, you get a, you buy a lot of stuff, right? That's, that was his word, stuff. Okay. Right? And I said, stuff. And I just said it three times before I responded. I said, <laughs> now let's look at the stuff that youth first purchases. Right. I said, hmm, barriers, providers. Right. That's classified as stuff or to keep our, our staff and kids safe. Right, right, right. Right. Laptop computers for the staff to use when we were doing virtual learning. That's right. stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's a necessity. Right, right, right. right. We're doing virtual learning, Right. We had PCs before, but now we need what? Laptops. Laptop. <laughs> that's that stuff. Yeah. Okay. A screen. I think that is a necessity, sir. Yeah. That's not stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind jumping through the hoops as long as when I look over to my right, that same person that you say is equal to me, that's doing the same work as me, is jumping through those same mm -hmm. hoops. Yeah. I don't I don't mind that at all. Yeah, You know, Mary, I really don't. It doesn't bother me one bit because that's what you go to work for. You have to do a job, right? That's what we get up to do. Mm -hmm. But if I'm jumping through these hoops, I need someone else to be jumping through those same hoops that's saying they're doing the same thing that I'm doing and getting twice. And they don't ever get questioned about the capacity. You know, they want us to do capacity building all the time as African-Americans. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm just being honest with you. It's always capacity building. Do you have the capacity to do this, right? We can help you get there. Felicia, how many times have you even emailed me and talking about some capacity building? You know, IT, but I'd be, IT Bookman been around too long to be talking about some capacity building, right? It's, 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 it's not right. But more to your point, like when we, um, I know this isn't about the learning hub, but I discovered that like one point, I think one point one million dollar for senior services is allocated in District 11 through the Department on Aging, and IT Bookman get two hundred and twenty-five thousand. And all I know of is two senior centers. There's other senior programming. There's you know the connector programs, but like that's not even. 25% of the budget and we were open during COVID. <laughs> right. It's not, it, this, it's not fair. It's, the system is not fair. Just some set up wrong, but I think Gail made a great point as far as how we maneuver around the system and making sure that our kids get, our, our families get access to, to meet their needs. Uh, eliminate as yes. many kids as possible that will not be getting services. Um, I know that Laura and Teresa do a great job of, of, of outreach and those type of things. Um, I just think if we collaborate and make sure that those gaps are being met and do, a, I think we can do a better job, including myself, of communicating how we can kind of attack some of the problems. Um, I think it will be fine. I think Mary, with you and Monique, with, you know, with the daycares and stuff, the early childhood, I think we all should, it should be a seamless, it should be a seamless transition, to be honest with you, if we collaborate properly. 
and then we can kind of be the model for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Delia, you and I, we, we serve that same population, right? And then we have ICY serving that other population. Um, I think we just need to sit down and really put a template together um, on how yeah. we could do things and, and move forward. And, yeah, and Renard, if I can trip, yeah, I think you're really going in the right direction where I'm hearing a lot from, you know, the, so, um, the social worker at Sheridan trying to put, you know, a list together of families who need essential needs, uh, but along with that, trying to make sure that they get this application, whatever this process is for our, those kids to register and make sure that they land somewhere where it's um, near their community or in our community. Um, and trying to see those gaps and see, have some sort of understanding um, of what we're all doing um, and like what spaces are secure. Like, I don't think we, I've heard 100% from EYF or from our supervisor about what locations are confirmed for the OMI. Right now, I think um, your location is the only mm -hmm. one. Um, and uh, Delia, I know Delia uh, for our kids first. Um, but, um, yeah, but kind I of, yeah, have an understanding. I don't have a confirmation on that. I I know they're coming okay. tomorrow. Um, yeah. I know they, there's. I'm send. I'm getting emails from other you know people, but I know nothing. Okay, yeah. so Media Love You Ward is a a, a hub. Okay, uh, great. But that will be run by Park and Rec. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question? Yes. When, and I mean, I I think it's you know the the principals know the the school mm -hmm. population best. You know, but in so many of our schools, we're supporting kids from all over the city, not from the local neighborhood, right? And so, so they're, doing, when, they're doing, sorry, Alita, they're doing, so just so before you go, they're doing, that's why they change it to a community hub. So the kids who live by the school is also a priority. So people who okay. work in the city and bring in their kids will be low priority, to be honest with you. Wow. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. As well as private school kids who I brought this up. Some of those kids are on scholarship that go to private that's school. Right. Right. And, exactly. right. And like, that's a whole different population of charter schools. That's a whole different population that they don't want to talk about. Same thing, Alita, as far as the special needs, they kind of just want to keep moving forward. I get it. You know, I get it. There's a lot of good people down there at DCYF. I get it. I know what they're trying to accomplish. I know that they have to say <laughs> where all of this money is going. I get all of that. But when we're building this, we have to make sure that we're building the blocks properly. If the foundation isn't set properly, it's just like your house, right? It's not worth anything if that foundation is, is broken. Build on sand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... We were, I can't recall what meeting it was in, but they, Del, you were in there and we were, they were talking about Unified School District that had money that was, they were still getting, but they weren't serving children. Mm -hmm. so I, we need to get clarification about that because they were, because I, I had a, a Zoom with one of my kids and the teacher was gone for 30 minutes. 45 and she, minutes today. 45 yeah, minutes. She was, I was sitting there with them. And she was gone, and it was telling her information about how to do Zoom. And the kids were all hearing it. And then when it's story time, they couldn't hear nothing. We couldn't see. I said, hello, we can't see. She sends homework, but not all the kids get the homework in the email. But I said, how can I get his homework? I mean, his work that he's supposed to do if you don't send it. So the teachers are having a dilemma, and I understand. They're not trained for this but the district is getting money for things that are not being done. So why can't go at this time, give that to the, the, the programs that need it right now, they're using having the children. So I don't understand. So there's a district meeting supposed to be today because I want to blow it up and say, what are you doing? The board you of know, meeting today? Is that what you're talking about? Yes, I want to go. Please Definitely. send me the link. My, when my daughter was supposed to send it to me. She didn't send it. Oh, I'm on so, it. I'll give that to you. Give me one minute. It'll be in the chat. Yeah, Tough because my, uh, my, I have a granddaughter who has special needs, and they're not, they're talking to my oldest granddaughter, Tiana Tania Lungsford, and we're trying to get service for her because she can't do it. She can't do the Zoom. It's not working. Right. My daughter, you know, 
I don't want to put her on on blast, but she is one of the she's one of the most genuine ten year olds on the bridge of on the brink of being eleven year olds. You'll know she, right now she's got three of her friends that she's met just in the community. They're all in the garage on Zoom in their classrooms. <laughs> they don't have, her friends don't have a place to be. Mm. Right? So our garage, we've made it into a little playroom. They're, and when I've peeked down there, they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Very which good. was amazing to me because I sit with, I sit with Brazil a lot. Like, and she's always like, dad, can I just shut it down? Like, no, but they're actually on task. But it's also been a problem with, um, I think it's Longfellow. And they're having big issues over there with their teachers. Yeah, see, Laura's shaking her hand. They're having one of the students, one of her friends go to Longfellow. There's, it's every 45 minutes, something's going on. Like, there's nobody there, right? So I'm like, she's like, Mr. Monroe, you know, what am I to do? I'm like, I don't, let me, let me look into it. But it's not just her. Right. So I'm like, yeah, Longfellow I, often gets left out. It's a little corner of our city. Um, so yeah, I had a few Longfellow families reach out needing extra support. So trying to uh, move that conversation up so that they could get the support they need. Yeah. Woo. It's well, lot. Renard, since you you know are having like a little hub in your garage, I'm gonna send my son to you. <laughs> hey, hey, they're more than welcome. The only thing that I the only thing that I ask when people drop their kids off is give me a return time. Don't <laughs> give, me <laughs> give me a return time. Don't worry, I'll send a whole bunch hey. of food and everything. Hey. <laughs> Don't you send food? Hey, I'll send hey. food for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they're down there, man. It's like, man. Every time I come back to the house, they are there just, I can hear them. Well, something's wrong with your computer. You need to go upstairs then. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is going to be, this is going to be a long school year. This is going to be a long school year. All right. So the I, got a, I got a question um, just regarding the hubs. Yes. I see on TV some communities where the parents themselves are creating their own little learning hub zoom rooms and all of this stuff like you said renard in your garage when they do that do they have to um get any kind of formalities or are they just taking the bull by the horn and doing what they need to do for the kids they're taking the bull by the horn um i know that mira loma that's where that's where my daughter goes she goes to mira loma i know that mira she does? Loma, yes we so. were there for 15 years we just graduated Oh, okay. So even we, even, all of us, me included. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I got we got we got some history with with Mira Loma. Also, you know when you first when you first walk in, you'll see a plaque there, right? It'll say these little girls. Yes. Those are my little cousins. That the Hodges. Yes, Halls. Yeah, Halls. Halls. Okay. You know, those are that was my family members. So, um, you know, their their life was taken at an early age, but um, mm -hmm. that's why we sent Brazil there. But they have that parent square there at Mira Loma. And I just had to send them a little message because a parent started a program and they were charging. Oh, you know about it, Hunt Teresa. They, char they were charging some crazy amount of money to the parents. And I'm telling the principal, listen here, I know you're not monitoring this parent square about all these services people offering, but listen, that's not right, right? They're, stop trying to make a, a million dollars off of these families due to the COVID. You know, there people are doing a bunch out there, um, Felicia, getting programs started illegally, having them in the parks and all of those type of things. So you just gotta be, be, be uh, aware of those type of things that's going on. Some people are trying to capitalize on, on this and there's some parents out there, you know, um, came up with some great ideas they think of, of starting their own, uh, you know, programs by using parents. And you just got to be careful. It's the next version oh. of privatizing our education is what it is. It's like the Lyft and Uber of the taxi industry right here is what's happening. It's the wild, wild west, and it's only going to get worse if we don't nip it in the bud. It's like um, bottled water, Alita. It's like bottled water. 
Exactly. That's <laughs> I love that. Water over here, but I'm gonna sell you some water. Uh -huh. <laughs> that, yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna sell you some yeah. beachfront property in <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you though, um, I mean the PTA is trying to trying to clamp down on that. Um, I don't know, Renard, if you're involved in the PTA up there, but um, the PTA that my kids got OT in the background, so I don't know if you hear the tennis balls. Oh, Sorry. Nice. Um, um, they've been trying to do a, you know, I haven't been as involved this year because we're out, we're over at Denman, but um, they had the first PTA meeting back in July or early August was all about trying to shut down the, the pandemic pods and a couple of the teachers. Yeah. Yeah, I was on it programs and, and all types yeah. of stuff. Yeah, oh I left God. the PTA alone. The PTA is their gangs to me. So I, I don't join gangs. The PTA, ooh, it's vicious in them PTA meetings. Oh, I, I, I was hey, 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 yeah, I had to let the PTA go. I'm like, I just don't have this much time in my life. Like, you guys, I'm afraid to walk to my car after those. Like, I, I used to be, I used to be the PTA president at Mir Loma when my son. Oh, was see, oh, you were a gangster then. I, yeah, yeah, you're an OG. But, but you know, all all of my ideas, they they vetoed them and then started them the year I left. And I was, oh, yeah, that's how I was like, he's some shady, shady, shady yeah, people. Yeah, PTA is something else. I, I'm a leader. I give you props for that. That is, that is. That is almost worse than joining the Hells Angels. <laughs> uh, it depends on the school. It, it, well, it I'm really sorry. varies from school to school. Some are good and some are good. I, I have to say, you know, that's like there's a couple of the PTAs yeah. in the district who, you know, middle class white moms like me think we're doing right and we're woke and we're, and we're, no, we're nowhere near where we need to be. Um, and so, working. Renard, hold them accountable, man. Hold them, keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Mira Loma was a good school. My daughter's there. She's 50. But they put her in the gifted program saying the classes were too crowded. So they put her in a gifted program. She went to gifted program because she went to high school. So the classes weren't crowded in high school either or junior high. So I have a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to just say, can't you tell Delia is a gangster by her walk? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, have you guys ever seen Laura's walk? Laura got a little gangster in her, too. <laughs> I got yeah, one keep them accountable. She like, she's a small package, go, but she looks like she carry a big stick. <laughs> right, right. Felicia, what? I have one announcement for Invest Black before we um, adjourned. Okay. What is it? Also, I was wondering why was Scott Falcone on here? He's not here now. Did he have something important to say? Or I don't know. He's not usually on here, and you didn't even invite him to speak. We were on know. and on, and and then he left. Yeah, I don't know so, why he was on. Um, well, we should have found out. There's a lot, there's a lot of spies. Just like have someone on and then not acknowledge them, and then we go over time, and we never heard why he was here. Okay. So I just wanted to say, uh, Invest Black, there's um, a meeting for us to formalize kind of what we're doing, create our goals, because we already have calls from um, people and um, who want to find out what they can do to invest Black. So I was hoping that cohort could come together and, and formalize that body. But we're going to meet on September 2nd at 4 p.m., for just one hour to pick a date and time for us to have our meeting Zoom and and to come up, you know, with our schedule. Um, and I, I've sent the invite, but if you didn't get an invite and want to be included, you can let me know, send me an email, or you could put it in the chat. Okay. Very good. Any other announcements? COVID testing. Yeah. Yes, Chantel. Hi. Yes. Hi. Thanks for having me. Usually it's, uh, I think Sophia has been on these calls, but she's out today. Um, yeah, just we are enrolling still public high school students in our online arts classes after school. So if you know any um, high school youth who might be interested, we have fashion design, uh, printmaking, industrial design, music, production. Um, and photo film. So those are all online. And if there are any supplies, we are providing them. Um, 
and yeah, they're free. So I'll, I can put the link um, in the chat. And then also we're having some monthly online arts workshops by um, black artists in the Bay Area. And the first one is with Siron Norris. He's like an animator. Um, anyway, so that's a free animation workshop next Wednesday. Um, that's open to the public. Um, so I'll, I'll put those things in the chat in case you know anyone who's interested. What age group? For, for which? For the art. Um, so the, the general arts classes that we hold throughout the semester are high school, high school age, um, public high schools. Um, and then the animation workshop, I don't think there's an age. It's just open to the public. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Lucia, for the information. Alita, would it, do you want to participate in? Oh, I'm sending Felicia an email right now. So don't worry, you can strike oh, okay. that. All right. Okay. And Renard, did you have something else? <laughs> no, just, just continue to pray for me. <laughs> Renard, what's, can you share your number? What's your, how many kiddos can you get into um, your site? 20. 20, okay. Yes, 20. And we are, oh, this came up because I guess people on my mouth is, I need to do like this. I know that uh, people are asking, yes, Youth First has a website. Yes, we have all of that. Um, our website, because I wasn't good at having a monitor, it was hacked last year. And like when you would click on it, and once you clicked on like a staff member or something, it went to one of those websites mm. that was appropriate. So we had to redo everything, but it up and going back again on Monday. It'll be relaunching on Monday. So we just had to buy a new domain name, change a few things, and it will be back up on Monday. Um, we are fully moved in back at uh, Merced Heights. Nice. The gates are still up. I just pull them. I just pull them open when we're open and we're not open to the public. We're just open for the program. Um, but the playground, everything's done. Inside is done. We're waiting to um, have another site visit tomorrow as far as our internet access um, for that. We've had the Department of Health come out already. Um, so we've had a lot of things going on, but we're up and going. We're ready. Um, and we'll, we'll be starting on the 14th. We won't be starting uh, early. We'll start on the 14th only because it will just help us get the building all the way in order. Um, I will have one uh, during the COVID testing booth that we have on Friday, I'll be having the building cleaned again um, by the cleaning service. Uh, they're coming out and, and cleaning the building for us. Um, the the new playground is wonderful. Are they going to be allowed to go on it? I yes, mean, nobody can use playgrounds now. Yeah, so they'll be allowed to go on it. But the problem is, I know I don't know if everybody know, even though this this project took two years. Yeah. The only thing that was done in the bathrooms was to get the bathrooms redone. I mean, the building wasn't the whole building wasn't redone. I just no. a lot of people are confused by that. Like, so the floors are still old, you know, all of that. So people are like, "Oh, what happened?" Like, like <laughs> yeah. was, this is this is what this is what it was. Like, this project was supposed to take seven months it's taken two years wow. just, and they're still doing little stuff up there like it's still not all the way ready but the you know it's safe enough for us to be there which is which is fine with me because all this bouncing around with my program has been horrible um but it, we're just now getting settled back in getting everything in and um it's 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 going okay yeah. but i will send you guys the uh, our our new website and all of that type of stuff. I'll send it uh, in our next meeting, but it should be launched on Monday. Okay, and you're including the community learn community hub information and stuff. I will be doing. I I will yeah. I'll be putting the community <laughs> hub a little bit on there, but not not a whole bunch of stuff. Um, hopefully, we can get back to some type of normalcy by the time of January. I'm I'm that's what I'm shooting for. Because um, I know that they're rolling out the schools and everybody's on it, even you, Chantel, meeting you with Youth Art, Art Exchange. I know that the high school hubs will start what they said, Delia, in the next month or so, right? Yeah. So if they're starting a high school hub, that lets you know that we're not going back to school, right? 
Yeah, I mean, but there's no space. I don't. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe we're gonna be in. You know, maybe we're gonna be using juvenile hall since they're closing that down, right? I don't know. They might be using that as a space. See, yeah, everybody, yeah. Preschool to, to prison. prison. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff going on, you guys. So, um, but I'm I'm shooting for January. To be honest with you, I don't know what you're shooting for, Laura. But I'm thinking January we'll probably get back to some uh, type of normalcy because I know during this flu season that starts what September 15th. Is that the flu yeah. season? Yeah. I know that no one's going to try to start anything during the flu season because that's going to be craziness with people trying to figure out do they have the flu or do they have COVID? You know? So that's all. That's my update. <laughs> um, Renard, I think the Department of Public Health just put out um, the waivers for K through for K through six. K through, K through five, yeah, K through five. Okay. okay. Yeah, so they put the waivers out and every kid, so when they do the application for the learning, I mean the community hubs, that every every parent has to sign a waiver, staff has to sign a waiver, yes. all of those things are, are in place. They just emailed us out the application forms late at like nine o'clock last night um, to send out to the first set of kids. Oh, they and did? Very nice. Yeah, yeah. You didn't get yours? No. Uh, <laughs> it, guy, I, I'll, forward, I'll forward it to you. you know that's <laughs> it has your number on it, though, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, so they sent it out last night, but you can at least look at it. So, okay. Um, the first set is going out. Uh, the first, we're supposed to approach the, the first set of kids now, and then they're going to look at the stats by Monday, and then oh. they're going to say, okay, if you're not at your quote, you know, your number, then reach out to the other set of kids. That's how. Um, um, yeah. I I just got a text from Allison Collins. Uh, Allison Collins, who's one of our commissioners on the board of Ed. Um, the community learning hubs is an agended item on um, the board of Ed meeting today. So um, if you guys wanted to come and give public comment on that, um, I think that would be awesome. Um, I'll put the webinar ID. With that, I'm gonna let Mary Mary Thomas attack them with that. I can already say, you yeah. tell me what you want me to say, give it up. Just go, uh, go ahead and go to work, Mary. Yeah. All right, I um, actually, she's she and I have been talking behind the scenes because I've been feeding her a little bit of your information, Renard, which might be part of why you've been getting in trouble because she is very, 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 very vocal. Um, and she and a couple other commissioners have been starting to push DCYF too. So, um, oh, they're getting it on all sides. They yeah, get it on all sides. They know this is not right. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the five school districts is part of the problem too. They have money. They need to give up for yeah. these community hubs. You know, it's and funny. Going back, I gotta yeah. stop being in the dark. They just gotta stop trying to keep everything so secretive and in the dark. Like yeah. that is the main issue. They have to, everybody has to stop that. I'm only going to share this. I'm only going to share that. That's, that's just not right. Right. I mean, I end up being an SFUSD apologist all the time or, you know, the cheerleader. And I don't mean to come across that way. I mean, but we've got 56,000 kids right now that we're working on planning their distance learning and getting them back into school. There's no flipping way that our district has the bandwidth that also take on community hubs. There's no way. No. Right. And it's, I think the problem is what, where should we be prioritizing right now? I mean, the immediate need is get the teachers trained to do distance learning, right? Get the families, the information they need. And so I think that's where the big push has been, but then you've also got the facilities group working on getting the schools ready to reopen. And then there's just no one left to coordinate with DCYF. Right. Um, so it's just our public education system is so under, so underfunded. But we need to prioritize for this kind of stuff. We really, really do. Ooh, all right. So, all right. Well, let me know when the next meeting is. But get, get them tonight, Mary. Get them tonight. Okay, them Mary. I'm going to put in the, um, so, you know, when you get onto Zoom, the webinar ID, I'm putting it in the, t in the chat right now. I think it's, it's 885. Um, one zero uh, you don't need to hear me talk and type but don't make sure you copy this because it's you've got to have the mean and the password um in order to get on um 
to Zoom. So the first one is the webinar ID, and then the second one is the password. So, All right. And for if you well, Alicia, Alicia, you just sent out a thing for your, your Invest Black from 4 to 5 to 3. I just want to say I'll be late getting on the call because I told you at 3, that meeting's definitely going to go over with Maria Sue and the principals. So I'll be a little late, but I'll be on there. But I'll definitely do that. It's next, it's next week, though, right? It's next week. It's next week? Oh, I thought yeah. it was. Oh, okay, great, great. All right. Um, all right. Guys. Thank you, everybody. It's been a blast. Thanks, guys, as always. As always. See you Friday. Thank See you. Friday. Friday. Oh, I, I reached out to um, um, Mr. Choi to stop down to um, the Department of Elections to pick up some voter outreach stuff. So hopefully I'll have that to bring with me Friday. Okay. Oh, so. I don't know. Did we run out of uh, uh, census stuff? I got to ask Patty. I don't know. Those masks were popular, though. I know. That was awesome. I have I have two in my car. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, Maurice gave me a bunch to hand out in other places, but I can bring them back for Friday. I have no, no, no. a couple, think, like a dozen. I have. Um, I I need to connect with Claudel to get some more info. Get some more information. Cool. So, all right. Thank okay, you. We'll see you Bye. all Friday. Bye. Bye. And Mary, I look forward to seeing you this afternoon. <laughs> all right. Bye. Is that three o'clock, Alita? Three o'clock, yes. All three right. o'clock. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.